body grows bigger. Your mind must flower. It's great to learn. Cause knowledge is power. In Schoolhouse Rocket, the chip on the block of your favorite schoolhouse, Schoolhouse Rock. Come on, let's follow them down to that place of renown. They call it the Conjunction Junction Diner. With Schoolhouse Rocky and friends, you know the fun never ends. Cause everyone's a Schoolhouse Rock headliner. Extra! Rocky gets the diner cooking in short order. When he feeds that video jukebox and nickels, dimes and quarters. Conjunction Junction, what's your function? Working up multiplication to music. Rockin' with grammar and science and history. With music on the menu, learning's really no mystery. When you're in Conjunction Junction, fun's your function. Picking up some knowledge, rockin' round the clock. Accumulating power, watching schoolhouse rock. Hey, Chef, what's the special today? Lots of lettuce with a side of money. Rock! Here's how to make sense of dollars and cents. You know I love country music and I practice daily on my out of tune cockamamie ukulele But my daily ukulele playing ain't gonna get me far I need a guitar, an amp, and some quadraphonics And several hundred dollars worth of electronics If I'm ever gonna get to be a country western star Gotta get me some dollars and cents, dollars and cents Them greenback bills with the pictures of the president I hear you squawking, Miss Becky Sue. Why don't you drop by the bank and I'll explain to you how you can make more dollars if you use a little common sense. Chill out, young lady, no need to fret. Although you can't afford to buy that new equipment yet, you got a couple hundred bucks saved up in your birthday stash. Why not deposit them dollars in the bank instead? Then at the end of the year you come out way ahead because the bank will pay you money in exchange for the use of your cash. And that's called interest. You're making money that way, and you can buy that gear about a year from today. Saving sounds mighty nifty, Mr. Banker, dude. You know I'd like to be thrifty, but I ain't in the mood. I'm inspired, and I'm writing me a brand new country song. I got a lot of country western in my blood, like Reba and Loretta and Winona Judd. Gotta get me that equipment, and I ain't about to wait too long. Gotta get me some dollars and cents, dollars and cents. Them greenback bills with the pictures of the presidents. So please, Mr. Banker, won't you tell me how I can get my mitts on some money right now? Cause waiting for my dollars really doesn't seem to make much sense. Why, sure, Becky Sue, I can give you a hand. I can lend you the money, but you must understand. When you borrow from the bank, then you gotta pay it back on time. And when you're done paying back every dollar that's due, you will find you paid them back a little extra too. For every dollar you borrow, you gotta pay the bank a dollar and a dime. Again, that's interest, and it's just a fee. You pay to use the money that you borrow from me. We're talking about dollars and cents, dollars and cents. Of them greenback bills with the pictures of the presidents. Since life is one experience that spares us no expense, we gotta use them dollars with a little bit of common sense. We gotta use them dollars with a little bit of common sense. <laughs> Are you sure Dolly Parton started this way? How are you going to get by on just seven fifty once a week? Dad? Seven fifty once a week. They pay me seven fifty once a week. You see me walking tall down at the shopping mall because I'm making seven fifty once a week. Now every Monday morning when I get my pay, I'm feeling very rich indeed. I got a pocket full of money I can spend each day, so I can pay for all the stuff I need. I got a great start, but here's the hard part. I got to plan for every expense, cause every nickel counts when your entire allowance is only $7.50.
but I do like to live it up. Every day after lunch at school, I treat myself to an ice cream sandwich. At 50 cents a piece, that comes to two and a half dollars every week. But that's okay, I got five dollars left. I'm still ahead of the game. I start with 7.50 at the top. My favorite bubble gum is 60 cents a pop. I got to choose and plan and do the best I can. I think I'm gonna have to learn to shop. By just comparing prices, I could save a lot. I spent two dollars for a bite to eat. This chicken enchilada really hits the spot, but it's on sale for 50 cents across the street. Now I would like to try a slice of pizza pie, but I am high and dry, it's no joke. I should have planned ahead, I spent it all instead. My allowance is gone, and I am broke. When you get 7.50 once a week, sometimes the situation seems a little bleak. Cause it's a drag at the mall when you got no cash at all. You're down the tube, you're up the creek. Well, there goes my allowance. I didn't plan ahead, I made some bad choices, and I compared prices too late. I guess I'll have to find a way to earn some more, but that shouldn't be too hard. Maybe I can do an extra household chore, like wash the car, or mop the floor, or maybe help clean up the backyard. I'll get my spending plan, I'll get my shopping done, and still have cash on hand that I can spend on fun. I still get $7.50 once a week, but now I learned some money management technique. And I can save enough to buy some real cool stuff, and I made my little fortune, so to speak. On only $7.50 once a week, that's my allowance. $7.50 once a week I balanced my budget Where does the money go? Here's where the money goes Dad, how come you and Mom can't pay for me to go on my band trip to the Rose Bowl Parade? Don't you make a ton of money? I don't know about that, but we do have a ton of expenses. Like what? Isn't there something here we can do without? We can stop buying groceries, but that might be a mistake. Cause eating is a habit I'd be loath to try and break. We could stop paying income tax, but they might send me to jail. And if we don't pay the mortgage, then they'll take our house. Then where would we get our mail? If not for all these bills and taxes, our income would more than suffice. I feel like a real big cheese until everybody takes a slice. I don't want to bore you with my troubles or my woes Still you're old enough to know where the money goes We don't have to pay for furniture if you want to learn a postering We don't really need to pay the phone bill We can use tin cans and a string It's bedtime We'd never have to pay to paint the house if we went off and lived in a cave And if you're planning on inheriting a million bucks Then there's really no need to save We'd make a decent living, that's true But we have to pay these bills when they come due Please observe this illustration Which irrefutably shows Exactly how and where the money goes You know, if you could help us cut down on some of these expenses I bet we could save enough for you to go on that trip What could I do? We could really lower the phone bill If you'd limit the length of your call Bye You could probably put some money in your savings bank If you skip one trip to the mall we spend a little less on electricity If you turn off the lights when you leave And we could save a lot on our laundry bills If you watch where you put your sleeve You could bring a little in with a part-time job All we ask is that you do your best If you earn a little here and save a little there 
We'll try to come up with our rest We can't stop the money from trickling out But we can control how it flows And we can start by being aware of where the money goes Now let's meet Taxman Max. Welcome to the new variety, sit and relax. I'm that song and dance phenomenon, Max. Let me sing for you, do my thing for you till they give me the axe. Here's the song I'm doing, we're gonna fill you in on tax. Tax is that familiar melody, simple and true. I'll bet if you've earned a dollar or two. Bucks are being spent by the government for whatever they do. Anyone who works a living gives more than a few. So our schools can be their best. So our roads will have no cracks. Someone fix those train tracks. I hear you calling uncle and I'm paying my tax. These are my girls. Hello, girls! Hello, Max! Nice outfit! There are many different ways that we pay what we owe! Ladies, if you'll form a lovely tableau! Income! Property! Sale! Utility! Candy bars at my show! Uh, licenses for dogs and cats! And that's not all you know! Out of almost every dollar a person can make! City, state, and federal governments take Take what? What they think is fair, you give in your share now and then there's a break Max is talking taxes, hey, have I kept you awake? For the things your town may need For the things the country lacks All good things take green tax We hear you call an uncle and we're paying our tax <laughs> And Max is showing you why! With your taxes you support How we live and how we learn! Now here's the good news! Many things are tax deductible, which means their cost can be subtracted from the amount of income you'll be taxed on. Things like medicine, doctor bills, and supplies for your work. So keep those receipts! Be kind to your parents at tax time! And remember, April 15th! Are for my business. <laughs> I tell you, I'll detect them. Oh, yeah. I hear you call an uncle and I'll pay in my tax. His tax, our max, and I'm deducting my sacks. <laughs> Let's go walking on Wall Street. Extra, extra, latest Wall Street prices. It's a quarter. Keep the change. You gotta be cool when you're walking on Wall Street. Like going to school, you'll learn a lot every day. And this is the rule when you're walking on Wall Street. Buy low, sell high, take a piece of the pie. That's the Wall Street way. When you use your money to make more money, that's called an investment. When you invest in a corporation, that means you own your own share of it. The companies that manufacture things we use, like telescopes and videos and high-top shoes, are looking for investors such as me and you, so we can own shares in the company too. That's called stock. Smart investors look to buy stock in a company that's going up in value. Here's a stock that's looking mighty good, I think. Whiz Bang Cola, that's my favorite drink. Looks as if their sales are going up sky high. Better call my broker and tell him to buy. Hello, Leroy. This is Lester the Investor. Whiz Bang Cola's going up. Buy some stock for me. Okay, Lester, confirming your order. Buy Whiz Bang Cola at eight and a quarter. All right. You gotta be smart when you're walking on Wall Street. 
So just for a start, I check the paper each day. First I read the comics, then I check the sports, and then I take a look at the market reports to see if my stock is riding low or high, so I know when to sell and I know when to buy. Uh oh, here's a dime, keep the change. Stock prices go up and down, so smart investors like me buy a little at a time every month. That way we can watch the ups and downs average out in the long run. Leroy calls that dollar cost averaging. I don't want to get hurt when I'm walking on Wall Street. I could lose my shirt, not to mention my cash. So I stay alert when I'm walking on Wall Street. Buy low, sell high, take my piece of the pie. Read all about it, ladies. Wall Street Flash. Wiz Bang Cully's on the ride. Well, I came out ahead, and I'm swinging on Wall Street. And just like I said, I'm learning more every day. So remember the rule when you're walking on Wall Street. Buy low, sell high, take your piece of the pie. Here's a dollar. Keep the change. That's the Wall Street way. Hey, what do you say? I'll give you this for that. Hmm? When we lived in caves, there were no shopping malls, and people's manners were Neanderthal. No bodegas, no delis, no corner stores. Shopping trips turned into tugs of war. When not having pool got this man mangled, he thought he'd try an easier angle. I'll give you this for that, that for this. We'll make a trade called barter. I'll give you this for that. That for this, we'll have it made with barter. Now barter worked well, at least in theory, but a wallet full of yaks could make you weary. Making change for a cow wasn't easy to master, unless you were ready for an utter disaster. Shiny shells were far more portable, why not use them for what's affordable? I'll give you this for that. That for this, with shiny shells, why barter? I'll give you this for that. That for this, shelling out shells is smarter. For farmers in ancient Mesopotamia, the barley they grew was the money mania. When hauling big sacks put their backs in traction, they invented coins to lighten transactions. Now when a man had a debt to settle, he'd dig out some coins made of precious metal. I'll give you this for that, that for this, silver or gold or copper. I'll give you this for that, that for this, with coins you're a smarter shopper. Then China made money even more desirous, printing it on paper made of crushed papyrus. Take one from column A and one from column B, the Chinese paid their checks in paper currency. When Columbus set out on that famous charter, he had no paper money so he had to barter. He took along some beads for currency, so barter played a part in our discovery. Balboa and Pizarro and Sebastian Cabot, even Coronado had the trading habit. I'll give you this for that, that for this, they loaded up with gold and parted. I'll give you this for that, that for this, and soon the whole world was charted. Today we use cash and spend with ardor, but that doesn't mean we don't still barter. When a football team needs an all-pro guard, or a kid like you is into trading cards. Take this for that, that for this, bills and coins are smarter. But when you pay for that, remember this, it all started out with barter. What's the national debt? It's a monster. To your left, folks, is the Washington Monument. To your right, the White House. And over there, just beyond the Capitol, is the national debt. Whoa! Wow. There's something huge, red, white, and blue, that's grazing in D.C. 
It's gobbling up the taxes that are paid by you and me. It doesn't seem to notice we really can't afford the billions that it's costing us to pay its room and board. It doesn't roam, but seems content to dwell on Capitol Hill. As long as trucks keep pulling up with tons of greenback bills, we've got to feed the big guy. We really can't forget it has an awesome appetite. Tyrannosaurus debt. The debt was born in 1790 when our new government took over 75 million the colony spent in the Revolutionary War. We've got to feed the monster so it doesn't get upset. It's got an awesome appetite. Tyrannosaurus debt. Alexander Hamilton, our first Secretary of the Treasury, he's on the can, you know, wanted a federal debt to provide a reason to establish taxes to support our new nation. The debt was young, they kept it small, they didn't know back then. In 1812, another war would make it grow again. By 66, the Civil War had cost the nation millions. The government in Washington now had a debt of billions. The Civil War ran up a debt of almost three billion dollars that still wasn't paid off by World War One. We're spending money we don't have, or so it would appear. The deficit is that amount we overspend each year. Though congressmen and senators make vows to cut its size, despite their honest efforts, the debt just seems to rise. Now the debt's over five trillion dollars and still growing. A balanced budget would be great to spend within our means and stop the monster in its tracks before we bust our seams. It feeds on just the interest. Its appetite is wet. It never ever stops to rest Tyrannosaurus debt. And this is the U.S. Treasury. It sells treasury bonds, bills and notes, and savings bonds to finance the debt. The U.S. government promises to pay the owner interest plus the value of each bond at a future date. We've got to try to tame the debt and bring it down to size. To let it grow unchecked like this is certainly unwise. The debt's a monster problem that we really can't ignore. I guess we should be grateful that it's not a carnivore. We got to keep on servicing our trillion dollar pet. It's got a monster appetite, Tyrannosaurus debt. A fiscal misadventure with trillion dollar dentures, Tyrannosaurus debt. Feeding time is all the time. The check? The check's in the mail. The check's in the mail. The check is in the mail. And it ought to be there Tuesday without fail. If you have got a bill to pay or something you need to buy, just type the check and send it off in the mail. Millions of Americans go out every day with a checkbook in their purse. They might have a little cash to pay for their lunch and a little to get home on the bus. But if they suddenly decide to make a purchase or shop, they whip it out and write out the exact amount. With some ID, then they sign it, and they walk out with the stuff that they paid for with their checking account. The check's in the mail. The check is in the mail. And it ought to be there Wednesday without fail. When you need to send some money to for business folk do Just write a check and send it off in the mail Every month you've got a little bundle to pay Like the rent, the lights, the phone, and the car Write them out for each amount And send them away with an envelope and stamp they'll go far It really is a safer way for you to pay all your bills And so you ought to open up your own account your check is just a written order Only you can write that tells your bank To pay someone a certain amount The check's in the mail The check is in the mail And it ought to be there Thursday without fail You can keep your money moving With a flick of the wrist And you're happy that the check's in the mail Now you may wonder what happens When you send a check to someone And how it gets back to your bank Well, that someone Deposit your check into their account and then, through an electronic flow of digital information, your check is cleared by a central bank and comes back to your bank, where, at that point, the amount is deducted from your account and paid over to theirs. 
So it's obvious that you gotta keep enough money in your checking account to stay in the black. Otherwise, you'll write a hot check and that sucker's gonna bounce. And that's illegal. Once a month, your bank will send a statement to you so you'll know just where you stand. Listing all your checks and charges and deposits too to help you stay ahead and keep things in hand. And you should learn to be real careful with your checkbook and your checks and keep track of every little amount. Now you compare your figures with the banks and if it all adds up then you can say that you have balanced your account. The check's in the mail, the check is in the mail and it's got to be there Friday without fail. But just remember that you've got to have some income coming in before you send out all those checks in the mail. I'm sure it'll be there next week sometime.